Mini Motorways is a traffic-based puzzle game released in September 2019 for iOS and June 2021 on PC by Dinosaur Polo Club as a follow-up to their previous game, Mini Metros, both of which share the same style and color palette. While one focuses on trains, the other focuses on cars. It scratches the same optimization itch Factorio does as you strive for efficiency, except without the added complexity and intricate systems. The main difference with Motorways is that it simplifies the mechanics of traffic flow such that it's easy to understand with there only being one type of road and a few select power-ups. Some may desire more complexity, such as one-way roads or manually controllable traffic lights, but that isn't what this game aims for, minimalism is part of the experience. Games like City Skylines do traffic simulation better. It's got many different types of roads and destinations, but is much harder to read and comes with an added layer of complexity, that being the city management which also controls traffic flow. Many motorways should be viewed as a puzzle game instead of a simulator. It's easy to read, but provides a good challenge to those striving to reach the upper stages of each level. It's impossible to talk about mini motorways without discussing mini metros. The inspiration is clear, as the developers chose to iterate on their previous experience by bringing the gameplay to a new, although similar, setting. Train stations are like little cities. Both are tightly knit networks that have to work efficiently. Personally, I find mini metros to be more enjoyable and interesting, although both games are excellent in their own right, I'm just not as interested in trains as I am in cars and traffic. How this game works is you choose the location to start in, with predefined geography in space. Each game starts with one house and one destination, which I will now refer to as a shop. Each house is colored, and so are each of the shops. The route you create needs to connect the same colors together. Orange to orange, green to green, etc. Shops will accumulate items daily that need to be picked up by cars of the same color. When an item pops up, it will ping the nearest available house to send a car so it can be taken back to the house. Houses only have two cars. More will appear at random, and you will likely need to incorporate them into your network to meet demand. You also have a limited amount of road that you can place, so things need to be efficient. Ideally, as more colors of shops and houses pop up, you will be able to connect them all separately with their own unique roadways. The reality is that they will need to share, and that's where you're going to need to think ahead. At the end of each week, you will have to choose one of two upgrades in the form of a special roadway feature and normal road tiles. These are often something like one motorway and ten road pieces, or one roundabout and twenty road pieces. You will have to decide what makes sense for your city at that time. Each of the special road pieces have their own use, the most useful being motorways, which allow you to connect two points together while building over top of the existing roads, therefore avoiding traffic. They are less useful in mountain ranges though, so other tools like roundabouts and bridges can be used. Also, there are traffic lights. If I've learned anything from city skylines, it's that traffic lights aren't as useful as they seem. The good news is that you can delete roadways and specials on the fly and replace them as necessary. Be warned though that that they take time to go away completely, because the cars that are routed to go that way will need to pass through them first. The objective of the game is to deal with the ever-growing demand of the shops as they randomly appear along with the houses. When a shop gets too full, a timer will appear, and once that finishes, the game is over. That sounds simple enough, but the reality is you will be pausing to optimize everything in the later stages of the game, as houses will appear across the map from their destinations. I don't want to spoil the most optimal playstyle, because I think it's more fun for you to figure out, but I do have a few tips. In the later stages of the game, shops will pop up that house two different colored buildings. This will mess everything up in your network because it spawns one of the buildings before the other. Be careful if you have everything isolated because this color always ends up being the worst case scenario. Traffic lights aren't very useful, roundabouts are better, but they take up more space. It's a good idea to keep one motorway in your inventory for emergencies, where a shop's inventory isn't clearing up fast enough, or if something appears in an awkward position. Avoid making too many intersections, this will slow down traffic a lot. Be sure to isolate as many colors as you can in the later stages of the game. This isn't easy as houses will be all over the map, but it leads to more efficient cities. Pause the game if things are getting overwhelming. Don't be afraid to redo your network if it isn't working efficiently or something has popped up in an annoying place. Taking up more spaces can actually be a good thing, as it blocks the spawn of new large buildings. Finally, be sure to note when stores grow in size. They require more attention as they grow in capacity. Overall, I'd say my time spent with many motorways has been worth while. It's a small puzzle game that starts off relaxing and slow, but ends with an explosive crossover between a Harley Quinn polo and a spaghetti factory. If you are looking for complex games to optimize, I'd suggest Factorio and City Skylines, but if you want something a little easier on the eyes, with less complex systems to learn, Mini Motorways will be right up your alley. For only $10, it's worth it at full price, just don't use the traffic lights.
Thanks for watching everyone. This is my first review in a while and it feels good to get this idea off my chest. Maybe, just maybe, I'll do more of these shorter videos in the future if you're into them. Like this video if you want to see more like it, subscribe to this channel if you're interested in this content, and check out my website automotiveflux.com if you're interested in Bugo stickers. Uh, this one made it all the way to Austria. <laughs> I'll see you again next time.